Hello everybody, welcome to Chao Padre's cooking show. Today we are going to make two recipes. One will be a sweet and sour salmon. And the other will be ZT or little rigatoni with cauliflower. Now we're going to start off today. This recipe of the sweet and sour salmon is a compilation of sweet and sour recipes that Sicilian cooking is very famous for. Normally it's made with chicken, sweet and sour chicken, but today I'm using these beautiful bright salmon steaks. Notice they're about an inch or two thick because that's important so when you turn them everything doesn't break up. If you use a flat simple fillet it's difficult uh, in cooking them because they might break up. Our ingredients today are going to be about three quarters of a cup of black olives, a half a cup of green olives, and a tablespoon or two of capers. Now, a lot of people don't know what capers are. Capers actually are buds that grow on the bush. And they grow rather wild on the sides of hills and mountains in Sicily and other parts of southern Italy. And they pick the bud before it opens up, and then they brine them with vinegar and salt, and they're used in a lot of times with fish cooking, cooking fish, uh, and the like, those kind of savory dishes. So the first thing I'm going to do, also our ingredients includes one, Vidalia onion, sliced in half moons, which now I'm going to put in this wonderful large, large uh, frying pan with about a quarter of a cup of extra virgin olive oil. And I'm going to fry these. We want to never burn our onion because it gets bitter, but we want to make them nice and soft and transparent, so to speak. In the other frying pan, I have sprayed it with some olive oil uh, pan, and in there I'm going to heat the pan up till it's nice and hot, because then I am going to take these beautiful salmon and I'm going to fry them. Now, you'll notice that the bottom of the salmon has a nice thick skin. That's important because I'm going to fry them skin side down and I will not turn them over most likely because as the cook, the fish cooks, it's very delicate. It tends to break apart if you're not careful. So this nice thick skin protects the fish from breaking up. So just as soon as the olive oil is nice and hot, I'm going to fry the, um, the fish, and one of the secrets of frying fish is, unless you know it's done underneath, do not turn it, do not move it, because it tends to stick, no matter how much oil you might put on the bottom of the pan. So I'm putting them now into this nice frying pan here that matches the other one. This one is smaller. And we're going to cook this up, and I cook it on a rather high heat because you want the bottom of the salmon to crust up. You know, salmon is um, a delicate flavor. It doesn't have a fishy taste. That's why a lot of people like it. But it tends to be somewhat bland. So it's necessary to do something to it. And so that's why I'm going to make it in this manner. So you can hear the fish frying. You can see the onions frying up in that beautiful Sicilian olive oil. And you can see the, if you were here, you would smell the beautiful aroma of fried onions. You know, I knew someone that owned a restaurant and he used to say he would fry onions and garlic in a frying pan by the window and let the beautiful aromas seep out into the air 
And that, he said, would attract people because there's something about fried garlic and onions. Now, I don't put any garlic in this recipe, just the onions. See, you can hear right now the, um, the fish frying. And what we do is we don't need to fry it all the way through because I'm going to take this fish and I'm going to then put it in here and then it will cook up, it will finish the cooking process by me covering the uh, frying pan, keep it on a little longer and it cooks through, cooks the fish through. I'm not a great believer in raw fish or even rare fish. I like the fish to be cooked through, not dry as a bone, but you just get it to that point where it's nice and cooked. And that's what I like to do. So the onion is frying up nice, and we'll get that nice and soft. And this is a wonderful recipe. It, it, the other ingredients I'm going to put besides the black olives and the green olives and the capers, I'm going to put some vinegar, about a half a glass of vinegar, and a tablespoon or, or so of sugar. And that's what makes the sweet and the sour part of it. So it becomes not so acidic and not so sweet. That's why sweet hyphen sour. And that's what makes this recipe so special. In Sicilian cuisine, there was a lot of sweet and sour recipes. And I believe that some of that comes from the Arab influence, the dom Arab domination of Sicily um, in the 10 hundreds. Well, before 10 hundred, actually. It wasn't until around 10 hundred that the Normans came and ousted all the Arabs and returned Sicily back to its original Christianity. And that's what the Normans did in about the year 1000. So maybe from 700 to 900, 700 to 1,000, Sicily was under the Arab domination. So now what am I going to do? I forgot to tell you some tomato paste. Or if you had conserva, you could use that. And we're going to put some tomato paste in here. And we're going to find a nice hot spot and let it cook on that hot spot a little bit. Because we don't want the tomato to be raw. We want it to cook up. And you can hear the succulent salmon cooking away on that high heat. And the onion and the conserva or the tomato paste. I find that the tomato paste in the tube, they had some of it in a tube from Italy. I like it better than the one in the can. But if I have conserva, which I'm going to be running out of, not too long. I should have bought a lot more while I was in Sicily. I'll have to go back to the tube tomato paste. And so now I'm stirring all of the um, the mixture, the tomatoes. And now I'm going to check the salmon underneath to see. Oh, wonderful. It, not see, it, it didn't stick, see? If you don't, if you pick it up right away, it will stick and you have a mess. So now I'm going to lower this a little bit because it's nice and brown underneath. So I lower the salmon and <clears throat> I'm putting the, I think I'm going to put a little more conserva. And the next ingredients in here will be the capers. Let's cook this up a little bit. Maybe my cameraman could show you what it looks like with the tomatoes. See how beautiful that looks? And now I'm going to put in my olives, green and black. No, I didn't splice these in half, normally I do, but you know, I think it's fine. And my capers. This is a traditional trinity for a lot of Italian dishes. Capers, olives, 
an onion. And you cook that up a while more, let all the flavors fuse together. Oh, if you could smell this right now. You see, it's a very simple dish. Now I'm going to make some room. Oh, before I do that, I must do one other thing. See how you can forget? I'm going to get my sugar, which I forgot to get. So let me get the sugar in the cupboard here. Here it is. And I'm going to put, let's just say, I prefer things a little vinegary, so I'm going to put uh, a half a cup of red wine vinegar right in. And then I'm going to put about a tablespoon of sugar. And you cook that on a high flame so that some of that vinegariness evaporates. Mix it all together. And then you take your delicious salmon. And we're going to put these babies right in to this succulent, sweet and sour mixture. You see how it didn't stick? So, the rest of the salmon will cook when I cover this. Unfortunately, I do not have a cover large enough for this. I can't find one anywhere. So what I'm going to do, as mommy taught me, necessity was the mother of invention. So I'm going to lower this because we want the salmon to cook through. And by covering it, you will cook it nice because it gets nice and hot in there and you're going to cook it maybe for 10-15 minutes until the salmon is cooked through and then you're ready to serve it now I like to serve this with rice because you have that su those succulent juices that you can put with the rice and it's fabulous they will lick their fingers Anybody who's a gourmet or someone that likes to try different things. <gasps> Grandpa used to say, a la chic. Now I'm going to take this off because I want to start my next recipe. And this will still cook on the side. This is going to be our dinner tonight. And now I'm going to wash this frying pan. As you know, when you cook, the best way to do, Mommy used to say, Clean and go. Clean it as you go. Clean as you go. And that's what I do. Clean as I go because mommy had a fit when you dirty the stove or anything and didn't clean it. The important thing now, of course, is to always dry your frying pan thoroughly because when you put oil in there and fry things, the oil will bubble up and squirt right into your face and it could really burn you bad. So you have to be very careful. The frying pan has to be absolutely dry. So, I have right now a cauliflower. Mr. Cameraman, can we move here? And I have a cauliflower that I cooked maybe... Uh, in a pot of water for about 20 minutes or so. And what I'm going to do to the cauliflower is now I'm going to take it apart. I leave these leaves on when you boil it because it flavors the water because I don't throw the cauliflower boiled water away. I'm going to cook the pasta in that water to have that succulent flavor. florets apart so the cauliflower is not mushy but not hard either because what we're going to do now is we're going to put this cauliflower in the frying pan let me just 
put some uh, extra virgin olive oil because this is the essence of this meal. So maybe about, I would say, a half a cup of olive oil. And we're going to put it on. See how nice and green that oil is. And I'm going to pull these florets apart. And before I put them in the frying pan, I'm going to put uh, several cloves of garlic in the um, in the frying pan. And one way to peel garlic easily is to take a, a mortar from a mortar and pestle and bang it down, and it comes right out of the. This isn't good. Right out. Some, the garlic this year has not been good at all. It's been small and bruised. I don't know what it is. Maybe it was the droughts in California. I don't know. Seems to be getting a garlic. Just. We're going to put. Depending. But I would say like four cloves. And you can put them in whole because if you put them in too small, the garlic will burn too quick. It's garlicky, uh, the garlic to infuse into the extra virgin olive oil so that the flavor of the garlic permeates through the cauliflower. Not so strong, but just enough to distinguish it to uh, fuse it into the kind of dull cauliflower because you know there's not that many dishes for cauliflower it's kind of another one another bland vegetable and uh, this takes on a completely different flavor when you fry the cauliflower you will not believe it's like you, you wouldn't even think it was cauliflower so I'm going to put this last one in and here we go. Some of it's starting to. And now I'm going to put the florets right in. The cauliflower florets. I'm going to lower it a little bit. So what we want to happen here is, as the cauliflower fries, you want it to be a light brown. And then what happens is, of its own nature, the cauliflower will start to kind of disintegrate a little bit. It'll get softer and it'll make um, almost like, not a paste, but It'll, it won't be these big pieces of cauliflower, see? And you could even break them up as you're frying them. And, and this gives a wonderful flavor. And then what I do is, I take the, the water that the cauliflower was cooked in. And I'm gonna cook my pasta in that water. Now, over this we could put some salt. You have to put a little salt because as I say, cauliflower is kind of bland. And then you can season to taste later. But we are going to put a good amount of pecorino romano cheese. When I put this all together in a bowl, before I plate it, I will put a handful of pecorino romano cheese to it. And the other thing is, when you cook the pasta, save about a, a cup of the hot water of the pasta, the pasta water, which in this case will be the water that we cook the cauliflower. So you save that because what happens is once you mix this up with the pasta, it can become too dry. And so you add the cauliflower water, the hot cauliflower water to it, after you put the cheese, you mix it all up and then you serve it. Let's say it's Italian cauliflower au gratin. How about that? 
They have mac and cheese. We have cauliflower and pasta and cheese. And it takes on such a great flavor. You want the cauliflower to get light brown. And if you notice, my cameraman put the camera over this. You'll notice how the, the cauliflower, as I'm breaking it up, and it's starting to brown just a little. And you just have to keep your eye on it. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to get the, the, the cauliflower water. This is the cauliflower water, which I'm going to put over here and light it so we get the nice cauliflower water. And let me show you the pasta that I bought for this. Normally I use ZT, but these are little rigatoni. You see how small they are? Rigatoni rigati, which means they have lines through them. And they will be excellent with this because you want a larger kind of pasta, not a spaghetti or linguine uh, or an angel here. You want a larger pasta like ZT or a mini rigatoni. And this pasta is from Italy and it's excellent. There's a big difference because the Italian wheat is different from our wheat. Whatever, they, whatever kind of wheat it is, it's much more superior to ours because the pasta, when you cook it, it takes time. You don't cook it as quickly as you cook uh, American-made pasta because the wheat is the durum wheat. Durum meaning hard, duro means hard. So the wheat of itself must be of a harder nature and so the pasta, therefore, when it's made is harder and it takes longer to cook but it's worth the wait so as you can see this is cooking up with the olive oil and don't get nervous about the olive oil you need the olive oil in there because that's part of the olive oil you know when i was growing up they used to make fun of the italians they used to call us grease balls and spaghetti benders and all those kind of names, prejudicial names. And guess what? What are they saying now? The best diet is the Mediterranean diet. Olive oil, vegetables, fish, fruit. This is what we use in the Sicilian diet especially, and Southern Italian diet. We never cook with cream or things that are high in cholesterol. And so you, we use olive oil. We hardly ever use butter in our Sicilian cuisine. It's unheard of to use butter. Olive oil is the staple. And of course, it's better for you, much better. And so they were making fun of us. We used to eat um, snails. And now, of course, snails are a delicacy. We used to eat mussels. And now mussels are a delicacy. We ate broccoli rob. We used to take broccoli rob sandwiches to school and the, some of the children would make fun of us. What are you eating, grass? And now broccoli rob is a delicacy. So you see what, it came full circle. Now they die for the Italian cuisine, the American. They die for it. So this is keeping cooking. Once this gets light brown, you put your pasta in as it boils. And then you're going to get a nice big bowl like this. Father, Leona wants to know what <laughs> brand of olive oil is your favorite? My olive oil, I'll be very honest with you. Today, since the olive oil is so exp expensive, I buy basically what's on sale. So as long as it's extra virgin. However, there is a wonderful olive oil from uh, Shaka which is a wonderful one. Um, I can't think of the name of it offhand, but it's from Shaka. And there's another wonderful olive oil called Partanna, which is excellent. But you know, as long as it's the extra virgin, that's what matters. And you know, the price of olive oil has gone up significantly. When I was a little boy in Brooklyn, we had the Earl Man, as they said in Brooklyn. He would come every Saturday and deliver gallons unmarked gallons 
uh, silver colored gallons, tin gallons of olive oil. And it was fabulous. I don't know where, I'm sure it came from Sicily, but I, it never had a name or anything. Father so, Bonnie would like to know where you got the pasta you're using. I got it at uh, Mazio's. You could probably get it at other stores like Bagliano. Sometimes even the ShopRite has some of the Italian pastas. But you'd have to go to an Italian store. Now, it isn't absolutely necessary to have that. It just brings it up a notch, as Emeril Lagasse says. But you could use regular ziti, you know, the, uh, the Checo is good, uh, any of those. Now you see, you notice what's happening. You notice how the cauliflower is getting more crushed, let's say. And it's cooking nicely and starting to turn a light brown. Because what happens is, once we, we um, add the cheese to it and probably like a cup of the hot water from the pasta, it almost becomes creamy without any cream, without any high cholesterol creams like the French use. We don't use that. We make our own cream with what we cook. Things become cremose. Grandma used to always say when she made her ravu, she'd say, e come una crema. My sauce is like a cream. In other words, the consistency of cream. And it's true. And that's what happens with this. So you mix it, and that succulent extra virgin olive oil is wonderful. When we were in Sicily with the Paris trip, we went to a place where they actually you know, had the olive groves and they crushed the olives, etc. And we tasted the different olive oils. And I'm telling you, and, you know, the connoisseurs of olive oil use different olive oils from different parts of Italy for different things. Some they'll use with cheese. Some they might have with cheese and fruit. Some they'll use to cook. Others they like for salads. Extra virgin olive oil should be used in salads, and it should be used when making your ragu, your gravy, and making dishes like this. Uh, other than that, if you're frying, for example, chicken cutlets or veal cutlets, there is no need to use extra virgin olive oil. You can use either a light olive oil or even a canola oil, you know? Because like I say, the olive oil has become prohibitive. And the canola oil is good to fry uh, chicken, uh, cutlets, uh, veal cutlets. So, I'm waiting for the pasta to, uh, the uh, pasta water to boil. And what I'm going to do is move this burner here. Move this um, this frying cauliflower to the other burner. And I have a high-powered burner here so that the pasta water cooks much quicker. This is the Yama, the high-powered burner. And it's amazing how the high-powered burner cooks up quickly. What time is it? This is going to be our dinner tonight. Isn't it a delicious dinner? Now, Dr. Phelps, you want to show, the, um, show them what it looks like? You notice how it's not all those florets now. We would say now they're mini florets, let's say. And you, see, you can just absolutely see, and it, and it takes on such a wonderful flavor uh, when you mix this with the pasta, the pasta water, and lots of Italian cheese. Now, some people may prefer Parmigiano cheese. As I said, Parmigiano was made from cow milk, and it's a lot, it's not as sharp. The Pecorino Romano is made from sheep's milk. So there's a difference in the taste, sheep milk is more um, strong, the flavor of the cheeses. But Parmigiano is a wonderful cheese. It's wonderful also just to eat with bread and glaze. Parmigiano we would use more for like if we're making Alfredo sauce, which is not Sicilian, but parts of Italy. Actually, I believe it was invented in the United States in one of these restaurants. I can't remember where uh, the Alfredo sauce and uh, they use parmigiano for that. Very good for that, yes. Parmigiano was like for creamier things, cream sauces, if you're going to make something cream sauce, which, as I say, I don't make very much. Hardly ever. 
now that stupid fan is going on, which I detest, because you can't hear yourself think. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to conclude the show, because it would take us forever to do all of this. So here's the pasta water, you know, the cauliflower water. It has a little green tinge to it. Remember, I'm going to take this bowl, put the pasta in, uh, put the pasta in this bowl, put all the cauliflower mixture with the olive oil over the pasta, mix it around, and if it's too dry, you have your cup of hot pasta water. You mix a little at a time. Then you throw in your cheese, and you can put black pepper, which really brings it up a notch, as Emerald says, and it's a delicious, creamy Sicilian sauce. So best of luck to everyone. I want to remind you, if you're listening, that tomorrow around 2 o'clock, we're going to have a, an instructional tutorial.